Welcome. And I thank you for this opportunity to take you to a place in the Bible of the time that I was blessed to be the wife of a man called Nabal. Some will say, how could you, with a name so strong, but it be the wife of one so mean and so offensive? Well, I would have to take you there to this time, this time when arranged marriages were plentiful, the time of when we as women were seen as personal property. But the blessing in everything is that the man that I was arranged to marry, Nabal, he was not a pauper. He was rich. This is the reason why I have the glorious gold and purple in my linens and in my scarf. Because even though I was still a wife of some would say luxuries, and my husband, he would pursue things that would be considered now times just despicable. But when you are blessed to be married as a woman, you do not look at the inward of the person that others might see. You look at the heart. And when I saw him, I saw someone that loved me enough to want me to be their wife. So I honored what God had given me in Nabal, and I tried to work through it all. Yes, there were times that there were nights of drunkenness, and there were times when he would hit, but even so, I knew that God did not bring me to this, to not bring me through it. So when I heard of the men of David and his army coming out and protecting that, that Nabal had built, I was wondering what was for this good fortune that we had bestowed on us. I knew that God was doing something, for I had heard so many things that David would have done and that he had done to other armies and other people, but to spare the lives of us? Hmm, what peculiarity that we did not have to fear for our land or for our sheep, that we were able to still go forward in business as usual. I knew that I had to continue to do what I normally did, which was be there, needless to say, to support him in all his endeavors, whether they were good or bad. I just knew that I had to continue to take care of the household and our people because it was so important for me to be there for our people. Because if I did not do what God asked of me, then things would have been worse on the people. And I had a heart to love. I knew that to love God was to love his people and all the people that Nabal had acquired. I knew that I had to be there for them even if he was not. So when the servants came to me and they told me what Nabal had done, I was in fear of not only my life, but that of the servants as well. 
I knew that Nabal had made such a poor decision by saying such a thing to David and his men. And I just listened to the words play over and over and over in my head. How could Nabal do this? How could he be saying such an offensive thing to the man that could have smite us down? But yet, he never did. He could have killed us, but he never did. He became like a hedge around us and our sheep. To think that Nabal in his drunken state would only think that he could say such a thing and that no one would be at harm's way was incredulous to me. So I knew that I had to be not afraid and work hastily to unwind the misfortune that my husband had put on all of our heads. So I had the servants hurriedly get everything that David had asked for when he went to Nabal. And he sent the men out to him. I asked them to make sure that there was meat enough for all and to make sure that there was water enough for all and to make sure that any and everything that we could pull out there, we did to show them that we were going to be good people to David as David had been to us. And I told them to not say anything, to just hurriedly let's get there so that we could prepare these things for David and his men as he had requested. And I went out there to David and I hurriedly jumped off the ass and I bowed down to him with my face in disgrace of what my husband had done. And David did receive us and receive everything that we had given us. And he told me to lift up my head and to understand that the wise words and actions that I had done and that I said to him is the grace that he had given me that day and the hope that I knew that I had done the right thing. But I also knew that in doing this right thing, that I too had to rush back and tell Nabal of what I had done. And even when I found him, he was drunk. I did not wait and tell him that night. I waited for the next day because I wanted him to have a clear mind of what I had done and what I had done to save not just him, but all of us. And when I did tell him, he was not happy. He was actually very scorned with me. He couldn't believe what I had done. But he had to live that I took the 200 loaves and the two bottles of wine and the five sheep ready and dressed and the five measures of parched corn and hundreds of clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and I laid them before David. He knew that that was much but little becomes much in the potter's hand. And even though 
I did this. Mabel. He still fretted about, like, what have you done? But I knew in doing that, that I had done the right thing. I did not fear for my life. I did not fear for the life of the servants. I knew that that is what God had asked of me. That when my husband made poor decisions, that it was meant for me to make right decisions. And I did so. And 10 days, I tell you, 10 days. Past the time that I did such a great thing. I felt it one time I was in prison. My God showed me that for the just. He will redeem them. And in 10 days, God freed me from my bondage by taking the life of Nabal. And in doing so, I had no more time to be afraid of the repercussions of Nabal and his decisions anymore. I had the ability to now do what I must to continue to protect the people that I had inherited through the loss of my husband. So, I do not cry tears of sadness. I cry tears of joy. Because that is when I realized that I was free. <sighs> I can finally say that I knew I was free. So word spread quickly that Nabal was dead. And then I received a message, a message from David's men that request that David, he wanted me Speak to me. And I again hurriedly myself to him. And David said to me, I will never forget the words. Praise be to the Lord, God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment 
and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. And I realized then that for me saving not only myself, but the people, that God blessed me. He gave me a fearless faith and a fearless grace. And he let me know that right then that I was in safe hands. And David asked me to be a second wife. And I accepted. Because I knew right then and that he heard me and that he listened to me and that I was a woman that had spoken on my, on my husband's behalf. He could have killed me, but he accepted what I had said to him. And he forgave me. Sometimes our beginnings are not always what we dream of. Sometimes our beginnings may not even be what we desire. But if we trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, he shall direct our paths. And I am here with you today to tell you to trust in him, to love him, with all your heart, do not be dismayed by your current circumstances. Do not be worried that he does not hear you. Do not think that you are not loved. For he loves me. For I know he does for what he's done for me. And if he loves me, he too loves you. So stay with your faith. Do not sway. Do not continue to pray. Continue to remember God will fight for you. And you are never, ever alone. So women of faith, know that God loves you, and I do too. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Abigail.